Thanks. Thank you. Are you guys having a good time? I mean, I know that you've had a lot of wonderful things tonight, but I think that this will arguably be um, something that you'll enjoy. Because the point of Be Honest with the, with the presentation that we do every year here at uh, the summit is to basically have a conversation. So I want you to feel as if it's call and response. If you enjoy something you hear or you want to talk about something with the actual guest that I'm going to introduce in a few moments, please feel free to do so. Uh, I, I hope that you learn something uh, from our next guest. She is a spectacular woman. In the same vein in which Allison Overholt was just speaking, she was celebrating some of the wonderful women here at our company. She mentioned Mina Kimes and this wonderful story that she did on DeAndre Hopkins and the wonderful bond that he has with his mother. Um, that is something that everyone in this room should see. It really is special. It talks about uh, an irreplaceable bond between you know, mother and son, no matter what happens, all you want to do is make sure you're there for the person you love. And when I think about stories such as that, I think about this event, and we celebrate all these magnificent women, and we celebrate how we are so empowered and how we're trying to go against all the odds, all the difficulties, all the people and the naysayers who don't believe in us. And I hope that tonight, that all of the women, and this is just a charge, a call to action for the women in the room, can support all the women who are here. Um, it's hard for us in our world, right? It's hard for us to live and be great and be amazing without someone else telling us that we're not all of the things that we are. And this entire week is about supporting women and acknowledging their amazing accomplishments. Um, I have to take a moment because before we get to our guests, I do want to say to that very end, I really want to thank Laura. I really want to thank Rachel and Sarita. You guys all know the woman behind this, wonderful women here at ESPNW who put this event on year in and year out. Allison, thank you. When I've often felt no support, they've supported me, and I, I'm very grateful. Sarah, thank you so much. There are so many amazing women here, and uh, you guys, when, when we say these names, we're not just saying it to say it. They really do do so much work behind the scenes for us that we don't know about. Um, so back to Be Honest, as I digress. Be Honest, podcast about being honest. The name came from me trying to figure out how honest I could be with myself, how honest I can get a guest to be, how honest I can make the person feel in terms of just revealing themselves and being vulnerable in any situation. And I think our next guest is actually amazing for that. Ella May. Can we say that together? <laughs> uh, okay, no. Um, every year they tell me not to sing and I just love to do it. Uh, so I think she's pretty incredible. Uh, I had a brief moment to talk to her today before we even uh, got this interview started, and she shared some things with me, and I thought, wow, that's pretty incredible. Uh, she's very courageous. Uh, she is very, um, what's the what's the word for just like, it's not swagger, but she has this, I really am me, and I'll just be me and accept me for who I am. It's, it's like a vibe, yes. I don't want to call her someone else. Thank you. Who said vibe? Yeah, help auntie. Yeah, she's got a vibe, guys. That's what the kids say. It's a vibe. Um, and I need you to do me a favor. I need you to be extremely excited because it, it will be the most amazing conversation you'll hear tonight. I'm just going to say that. I'm not disregarding anyone else. But please give a, a round of applause for Ella May, y'all. How are you? I got excited to sing, but I didn't. Oh, I no, ready. you did good. Yeah, kind of, sort of. Please have a seat. Can I just say that this is my first time using this type of mic? Uh-oh. And I'm really excited. Okay. I've always <laughs> to use this mic. Does it, what does it feel like to you? Like you should be singing Janet Jackson's I, Yeah, I feel like, or? yeah, I feel like, I don't know. I've just always w really wanted to use one of these mics, and I'm really excited. You've never so. done that, like, on a tour or when you were singing? Really? No, I always just use the handheld mic, yeah. W, we're doing things new. We're breaking, we're breaking ground. <laughs> um, okay, so by, by way of backgr background, um, I got to tell everyone, you're, you're an amazing singer. There's so much Thank more you. to you. <laughs> right. You clearly aren't from here. You don't have my accent. We have different accents. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So tell everyone where you're from and how you were discovered. Um, I'm from London uh, originally. I was born in London. Um, and I actually got discovered by doing covers on Instagram um, about four years ago now. And it was when Instagram first released uh, a video. So you could only do 15 seconds. You couldn't do like a minute like you can do now. Um, and DJ Mustard saw one of my covers 
and reached out to me and then we got in the studio and it was like it all happened really quickly um and half a year later i was signed to him and we were a half, half a year later yeah so you had a 15 second video mm -hmm. on Instagram when you can only do 15 seconds because now you can do a minute a yeah. full minute mm -hmm. the kids say and then from that 15 seconds a half a year later which is six months i'm translating for the americans <laughs> you were signed <laughs> yeah <laughs> it sounds weird i know i'm i was one of those people before that was like oh no one gets signed off youtube and like those are like fairy tale stories and there's someone behind it and then it happened to me and I was like no this actually can happen so it's pretty crazy that's amazing okay so what was it what cover was it um well the first one I put up was a Fetty Wap cover but the one that Mustard saw which was maybe like four covers in was uh Tupac Keep Your Head Up I, uh, how, what was it give it to me oh how does it go like I don't keep your head up you just sang the you sang it uh yeah can you sing it for me just a little ah! <laughs> uh, that's it. That's all you did. For I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing in a second. <laughs> I'm like, wait, that's it. Ah, is anybody watching? No. I'm okay. gonna sing in a second. Okay, so you're like, wait, pause. We won't give it to you. Okay. <laughs> so then after that, um, how fast? Because you were relatively young. How fast did your life change? Uh, almost instantly. In 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 my opinion, instantly because everything changed for me really when I moved to LA, which was three years ago now. But to the public, to the public eye, uh, it would be like a year and a half ago yeah. uh, when Boot Up, boot up. went crazy. <laughs> is, every, is anyone in the audience Boot Up by, w by show of hands? Anybody got a boo? You, I, no one has a boo in the audience? No one? No one's married? No oh, one's okay. got a boo? I'm like, come on, y'all. Okay. Because <laughs> y'all not going to be able to vibe <laughs> if y'all don't have a boo. No, you can still vibe even if you don't have okay, a boo. Okay, so tell me why. Tell me how. How? How? If I don't have a boo, talk to me specifically. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's funny because uh, I used to get the question all the time when the, f the song started uh, going off, like, oh, are you booed up? And I had the whole world booed up, and I've been single. So it's like, <laughs> you, can be, you can be booed up. You can just catch the vibe and be booed up with yourself. You're supposed to love yourself. So oh. you be booed up with yourself. Talk and it will be it. okay. If you have a significant other, then of course, but yeah. even if you don't, you can still be booed up. I, okay, I love that. Take You can be booed up with yourself, ladies. Self-love. I'm, I'm right here. And gents, the, for the gents in the audience. <laughs> um, I always, uh, I, I think of people, and I don't think it's by accident. I think when you say almost instantaneously, I think it's, it's, it's years of work. It's years of prayer. It's years of just people believing in you, you believing in yourself. T take me through your, your your songwriting process because when you hit the charts, it was like, oh wow, who's mm -hmm. this? She's amazing, and then another and another. Yeah, and it's consistent, not a one-hit wonder. Take Thanks. me through your process of how you decide this is this is what I want to sing. What does your music represent? How does it say this is LMA? Um, I think the most important thing to me is really just really putting my feelings like out there, like as if you were to write in your diary every night. Um, about your day and how you felt or how something made you feel or how somebody made you feel. Um, I think it's really just about putting all of your feelings on paper to then translate obviously onto a mic and not being afraid to say something that you might think is too intense or is too much because th at the end of the day, those are the things that everyone relates to because we all feel those same things. We just might not know how to express it the same way or we might be too scared to express it. And I feel like expressing it is the one way to make yourself feel better for one, but um, that's I think that's what helps people relate to my music because I kind of just I'm quite I'm quite an intense person anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah I, that yeah I, I would I literally just I would go in the studio and however the the piano made me feel or however the the beat that I was listening to made me feel I'd kind of just go off of that and not think about it too much. I feel like when you sit down and you think about, okay, this needs to be A, this needs to be B, yeah. then it becomes very like, almost like mathematics. And then the creative part is kind of stripped, in my opinion. Um, you say that you're intense. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think intensity gets a bad rap. I, I, feel, I in fact, feel like it's okay because that, that translates to so many different things in your life. Like perhaps that means you are a perfectionist or perhaps you want things to be right or perhaps you feel more. You might be an empath. Um, when you say that you write and you're, I'm a, I, I take away from what you said, you're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You lay it all out there. Mm -hmm. How difficult is that in a world, especially in the social media world, that refuses to let authenticity rule the day? Meaning they want you to be something that's not truly who you are. Right. The push to be a different type of entertainer. Mm -hmm. How hard was that for you to maintain and stay true to who you are? Um, 
Luckily, it wasn't that hard for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think it really all depends on the people that you have around you and the people that you have in your corner, obviously, um, that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, um, that you work with. Um, and it's really how much you let that stuff get to you. Um, and I feel like I'm quite a confident person. I'm quite secure in myself. And I mean, we, we're human, so of course you might see something online that you don't like and it might get to you for a little bit, but I think you have to kind of remember being, being a public figure, I hate to say that, but being a public figure, someone's always gonna have something to say. And even if you're not a public figure, someone's always gonna have something to say. So it's literally like, you can either live your life for other people mm -hmm. and make everyone happy and you might not necessarily be happy yourself, or do what you love and make yourself happy and your family happy and try and try obviously to make as many people happy as you can but you're never going to please everyone else so i think i was very lucky in the sense that uh, my team my manager my manage my managers sorry mustard i have a very supportive family really supportive friends and i think that helped me uh to kind of just ignore all of the the pressure of what comes with being uh a singer and yeah I hope, does that answer the yeah. question? No, yeah, okay. I did. <laughs> I felt like, like I was rambling. You keep Sorry. a good crew around you. Yeah, I think I think that's it. one of the most important things in, in all of this, obviously, besides uh, being consistent and the music that you make or the sport that you play or whatever it is. I think people around you are one of the most important things because that's how you get through the day and how you learn how to deal with certain situations that, you know, I'm 24 and I got signed when I was 21 and being a 21 year old i thought i knew it all mm -hmm. and i absolutely knew nothing <laughs> um so you know having people around me to kind of navigate me through the stuff that i was experiencing that i'd never experienced before yeah. um yeah no yeah <laughs> i like it Thank i like you. it too because 24 to me is i don't know for you all that's still very young and for you to be my birthday is around the corner and i feel so old i'm like i'm gonna oh. be 25 oh <laughs> guys hold on <laughs> <laughs> okay no i you trust me you are fine um i you talked about a sport the gig the gills over there they're like hey girl we 50 over here <laughs> <laughs> you young <laughs> Um, you talked about a sport. I think it's interesting because I have to talk about this at ESPN. You played played soccer, football. I did. Well, I did. Yeah. So talk to me about your oh okay <laughs> your your soccer football career. Um, well, I I I it's, it makes me very sad to talk about because I wish I still played. Oh. Um. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was when I was in high school. So I actually went to high school in New York. So uh -huh. I was born in London and I moved to New York when I was twelve. Um, and I played for my high school, which was in Queens, and I played for an outside team in Long Island. Um, so I'd played ever since uh, I was in the fourth grade uh -huh. because uh, I have a brother. It's just me and my brother. Um, and he played football, and I just, for some reason, just always really wanted to be like him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I started playing with my friends. Um, and my one of my best friends played also, and she was uh, really passionate about it. So we kind of got in, yeah. That's my brother. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. What's your brother's <laughs> name? Look at Ella and brother. What's your brother's name? My brother's name is Miles. Okay, so you guys get the jazz representation. Talk to us. Miles yeah. and Ella. Ella Fitzgerald, Miles um, Davis. Yeah. I was about to say my brother's name. <laughs> <laughs> You're Miles, like <laughs> Miles Davis. My parents are huge jazz fans. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, no, uh, I just really wanted to be like him, so I started playing, and I ended up playing for a total of nine years. But wow. when I moved back to London from New York, I kind of had to... I felt like I had to make a decision whether it be music or football because yeah. I felt like I had to put my all into one thing. Um, but nonetheless, I, I'll, I'm, I'm confident that I'll pick it back up at some point. Really? I just have to, yeah, I just have to slow down. I'm, I've been touring all year, but in the time that I get off, even if it's not, pro uh, maybe not professional, but just in a sense of having fun with my friends and, yeah. Okay, so, you, so, so we can catch you playing locally here at a park or something. <laughs> I that hope so, when I get the time. Yeah. Well, okay, so after the tour? Yeah. Okay, so do we need dates or what should we do? We need to lock it down or no? We do. Uh, okay. We should. <laughs> we Talk should. to you. By the way, speaking of tour. Yes. Yeah, uh, congratulations on all the wonderful things that are happening Thank in you. terms of your career, your album. We got a big tour coming up. Talk to me about that. Yeah. Well, I've been on tour for the whole of the year. Yeah. <laughs> I started tour in January and I just got back from tour two days ago, three days ago. Um, but it's amazing. I mean, other than actually making music and being in the studio, performing is my second favorite thing to do. Um, and to be able to tour the world, you know, music has taken me 
to places I never even thought I would visit, let alone be able to go visit and perform. Yeah. Um, so it's been amazing. I, di I started in Europe in January. I then did uh, North America. And then I just I just came back from Europe opening for Ariana Grande. So and how oh, that's huge. So how long do you have a break before you go back out? You, you're chilling for a minute? Or um, I go to Asia next week. <laughs> OK, so back back on tour in Asia. Yeah. OK, good. We're just working. Yeah. Can I borrow five dollars? <laughs> because that's when you make the money, right? <laughs> tour, yeah. Touring is where is where you make where the dollars are made, Yeah, especially now because streaming streaming has uh, made it more difficult to make money from actual music sales. Touring is where you make the money now. So you're at a point in your career, and I think everyone loves this, no matter what you do. I don't care what you do, whether you're a singer, you're a journalist, whether you you know, you know, work as a, a manager at a wonderful company or you're whatever you're doing, you're at a point in your career where people are starting to acknowledge um, your gift, your craft. What was um, arguably one of the best moments in, in your career where someone came up to you that you admired and said, you do do your thing. I like it. Or there's you're been really amazing. There's been a couple. Um, but one that sticks out probably the most is Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he actually called me. I remember I was doing a, a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. And my manager, and my manager will like never interrupt the photo shoots. <laughs> he comes over and he's like, there's someone on the phone for you. And I was just like, this is w is like, is an emergency. Cause I was thinking you, you would never, <laughs> never stop me doing a photo shoot. So anyway, he's like, just, just take the phone. So I took the phone, I'm like, hello. And then I just hear Stevie Wonder singing boot up. And I was I, I no! thought, I thought it was too good to be true because obviously I recognized his voice straight away, but I was like, wait, hold, I thought I was dreaming. I was like, hold on, let me pinch myself. <laughs> and, then I, and then I looked at my manager and he was like, yeah, Stevie Wonder's on the phone. And I was like, what is going on? So he just hands you the phone, you're like, hello? He starts singing your song? Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, crazy. And then, yeah, I, I met him uh, not too long after that. Um, and I actually performed that. He has like a Christmas, uh, annual Christmas thing. So I performed there. But uh, he was just, he was so sweet to me. And he said he, you know, he loves the song. And he actually said that that's the first song in a while that has made him feel like he wants to be in love again, which was crazy to me. So, uh, yeah. I told you you had to be booed up. For this <laughs> song, <y 'all. laughs> did you tell Stevie what you just told the ladies? Just love yourself, Stevie. Did <laughs> you say that? <laughs> no, I, di I didn't. I, sh I should have. I should have. But um, no, yeah, that was that was definitely one of the best moments. Oh my I mean. gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. So you call your mom. What you tell your mom? You're like, mom, you never believe this. Uh, I can't even remember the the. No, actually, I think I called my brother first. Actually, okay. after, and. Uh, he was he didn't believe me at first. <laughs> he was like, No, he didn't. And then when I told my mum, my mum was like, Wow. But then my mum ended up actually meeting him because she came to the Grammys with me and he was at a party that we went to, a uh, Grammy week, and she met him and she my mum was just like so in awe. She was like she couldn't believe that she met Stevie Wonder. So <laughs> I like I and I'm a big believer in dreams. Like, do dreams not come true? I'm listening oh. to you talk about this. Did you uh, could you have ever imagined as a kid singing in the mirror? in the shower to your parents, whomever, that, that this would be the life that you would have. Like Stevie Wonder would call you and sing your song. Had you, could you even fathom that? It's crazy because I, I always dreamt of it, but when it then becomes reality, it still feels like a dream. It still, it doesn't feel like it's reality. It's like, okay, I think I'm still dreaming. Mm -hmm. And then you go, e the days go by and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm still dreaming. And then you realize that dreams really do come true. Amen. And they're no longer, I mean, they're still dreams because there's still people I would love to meet and love to work with. Um, and sometimes I have to just really like sit back and be like, wow, this is actually happening. Um, but yeah. Well, you, I mean, you're <laughs> very level-headed for someone to be, I don't know, you think you're getting old at 25, <laughs> dusty 25, <laughs> but like you are truly level-headed and you, you seem to have a good grasp on where you are in life Thank and you. where you see that vision for yourself and you're not overwhelmed by so much that has happened to you because some people, fame comes quickly and they don't understand it. It gets, uh, it definitely gets overwhelming at times, but again, like I was saying to you earlier, the people I have around me, I feel like are... Keep what help right. they keep. And, my, and my, my family, especially my mom, my brother. My brother will be quick to tell me, listen, <laughs> relax. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely that person. So, um, yeah, yeah. I like Miles. I don't <laughs> know him. I like him. Um, you talked about who you, you other have other people you want to work with. Who might that be? Oh, there's so many. Um, I would love to work with Alicia Keys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I can see um, that. I used to want to be Alicia Keys so bad. I mean, you can probably tell. <laughs> uh, I used to want to be Alicia Keys so badly when I was little, and I still mm. want to be her. And then that was another moment for me, I think, that was so memorable because she was hosting the Grammys this year. Um, and she actually sung Boot Up on the Grammys, and I cried in my seat because <laughs> I was just like, she's one of the people that I really look up to. Um, and I actually got to meet her, and she was just like, you're just doing so well. And it was just, it's again, one of those things where it's just like, this is actually really happening. So Alicia Keys is definitely. So uh, you look back and you tell your 21-year-old self at 25. <laughs> 24, I'm not there yet. 20, oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> Next month. <laughs> Yo, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> you look back and you tell your, <laughs> at 24, you yeah. tell your 21-year-old self, what do you tell yourself? What's the advice you give yourself? And to me, that's just like an instant. It's like no time. What do you tell yourself now at 21? Um, don't doubt yourself. I think the the expectations and the, what's the right word I'm looking for? The dreams that I had are not unrealistic. And if as long as you believe in yourself, it sounds so cliche, I know. Um, but as long as you believe in yourself, you don't really let anyone tell you no. You don't let people try and, try and mold you into what they see you as. Mm -hmm. um, stick to what you believe in and what you see for yourself. And who knows how long it will take, but I believe that if you're persistent, you'll get there. Amen. That, by the way, by the way, you can tell yourself that when you're 35, <laughs> 45. I will. <laughs> um, what do you do when you are not um, creating music and, 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 and in the studio and working? What do you do for fun? What is, what is LMA's downtime um really just relaxing i think i think uh my dog my puppy <laughs> is probably uh my best friend what's his name <laughs> sounds really sad thierry thierry yes okay you got to give him the backstory on thierry so thierry is somewhere around here i don't know where he is <laughs> he's somewhere uh he's a french bulldog uh -huh. and uh -huh. my favorite football player is thierry Henry. <laughs> um and my favorite football team is arsenal so that that <laughs> that gives you some uh, insight to why he's called Thierry. And I want another French Bulldog, and I'm going to call him Henri. Henri! When I get there. So. Yeah, yeah. I like it. But not yet, because he's a lot to deal with already. <laughs> he's, but I enjoy him. Yeah, he fun. was a good time, right? He's he was fun. fun. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I really want to to wrap this all up by by just giving everyone just a, an understanding of who you are, and I think they, I think they have that. Mm -hmm. um, if you have something that you have project per se, something that you're working on in terms of moving forward, what should people be looking out for? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, my debut album just turned one this mm -hmm. month. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's a big deal, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but since I've been touring all year, I actually haven't even been able to be in the studio, but I'm about to, when I get back from Asia, start on my second project. So. I'm not sure. I don't obviously have a timeline. Yeah, but yeah. you can go back and listen to the debut album. We now, can use that. Yeah, go back to Now, did you record Stevie when he was singing? Because I you can I play that. I was caught so off guard. And I didn't like, even what? have time to like, <laughs> I was just like, huh? I didn't know what was going on. I you didn't. were like, how? You're like, who is this? But I got to sing with him. I got to sing with him at, uh, last Christmas. So there's a recording of that somewhere. And somewhere. Okay, so we got that coming soon. <laughs> okay, so I think everyone in the audience, are you guys ready? To, to hear LMA. <laughs> You're in for a treat. I, I'll try, I'll turn my mic, can you guys turn my mic off? Because I don't want to <laughs> sing with her. Um, so um, I guess you're going to exit stage left and then I'm going to take a moment and we're going to let everyone get just a taste and then you're going to come back out. Okay. All right, give it up for her, Thank everybody. you guys. LMA! <laughs>